pre and secondary school level, having taught at Maria Regina Grade School and now currently at Belmont Secondary. <coughs> A first class honor roll graduate from the International School of Sports and Physical Education in Havana, Cuba, with a major in basketball. He is bilingual and has held a portfolio of manager for four different national basketball teams. He serves as a translator for different sporting associations and is also an active first division basketball player with local reigning championship team Straker Nets who currently holds the longest unbeaten streak in local <coughs> basketball history. <coughs> he is currently in the process of starting the Big Brother program, which is a program that targets at-risk students who come from high crime areas that need mentorship and guidance. This program aims to rewrite their thinking and change their fatalistic outlook on life, thus giving them a fair chance to find their place in today's society. Let us welcome Tristan Benjamin. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Ms. Camille, with all Protocols observe, everyone, good afternoon. So, I'm Tristan Benjamin, basketball player turned physical education teacher, and for a few minutes today, your guest speaker. As a teacher, I'm directly impacting the lives of my students, and today I'm going to try to do the same for you guys. There's a quote from one of my favorite basketball players. It says, hard work beats talent. When talent fails to work hard. I repeat that. Hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. So I want you for a second. Think about how your life would have been if you were not talented or if you didn't work hard. Do you think you'd be seated here today? What if I told you that many years ago I had a dream? My dream was to be an NBA player. I believe I had the talent. I believe I worked hard. Was my talent enough? Maybe it wasn't. Did I work hard? I most certainly did. But you see, in life, we have dreams and aspirations. And there's one thing that we don't cater for, and that's something called disappointment. You see, I was just like you. Now finish common entrance, as you know, as SEA now. And I went to junior sec, Curep junior sec to be exact. I should have gone to the five-year or seven-year schools that, as everybody had expected me to. But due to some family problems at the time, I wasn't able to focus all my energy into my exams. That was the first moment I got my taste of disappointment. So there I was, teenager. My mother went away to live. Father, as a new family, I ended up living with my grandmother, who never had a boy child. So I was misunderstood, felt like I didn't belong. One day at school, I was breaking class to go play basketball in the hall. And for the first time, I felt a sense of calm, a sense of relief while I was out there. And like all my problems were gone. It was, it, it, it was as if they had just evaporated until I felt patter, patter burning my back. The principal, Mr. Benjamin, you're breaking classes again. Sorry, sir. From bad grades to D's, E's, I's, you name it. Bad behavior, frequent suspension. It was really bad. My grandmother and father, they were fed up of dealing with me. In my mind, I thought I was just being a normal teenager. Just now, let me ask you all a question. Have any of you all felt like your parents get on your last name? Just now, just now. Don't, don't answer yet. Just <laughs> wink and smile. We'll understand. Right? But that's how I felt. I felt as though everybody was just on my case. My father told me if I ever 
catch you playing basketball again. I will cut your tail. Well, boy, I make up my mind for my cut tail. Because at that time, I didn't know what that outlet was. But basketball was it for me. The thing about basketball, it made me more disciplined. It made me respectful to my peers as well as people in authority. So the years have gone by. I'm in my new school now, St. Joseph's College. Slight change in attitude. Still no vision, no goals, no ambitions. Just going through the process. I probably utter the words, I can't wait to finish school about a thousand times. School felt like this vortex that kept pulling me in. And basketball was the only thing that I felt could have kept me up. Until I started building a relationship with God. To be honest, I actually grew up in church. People in school would not believe that. Eh? My grandmother was a lay minister. She insisted on me being an acolyte. But just like school, church also felt like a routine. One day I got into a fight with one of my friends in Curup Junction for reasons that made no sense whatsoever. And in the scuffle, somebody grabbed me. It happened so quickly. And all I heard was, stop, police. I saw my freedom flash in front of my eyes just by that word, police. And this officer is interrogating me, asking me, where you from? Where you living? Where's your name? Where's your address? And I'm giving him my info. And all I'm hearing is my father saying, Tristan, I'm going to cut your tail. I went home nervous that night. I guarded the house phone like a sentry. The moment I stepped outside is when the phone rang. <laughs> Me running back inside now, only to see my grandmother with the phone saying, hello, I'm like, I bet. She said, it's for you. Well, it's now I want to pass away. I said, hello. The man says, good night. My name is Lennox Sobers. So I'm wondering, did this police officer give me his name? I wonder if his name is Lennox Sobers. He said, we've been watching you for some time, Mr. Benjamin. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> but I'm calling to tell you that you've been selected or shortlisted to play for the National Under-17 basketball team. And here I was like, thank you, God, thank you, God, it's not the police officer. <laughs> but wherever that police officer is today, I really want to extend my heartfelt thanks because I believe he saved me from ruining my life that day. So life has changed. I'm a junior national basketballer now. Just finished CXC. I managed to get four passes at my first attempt. Finally, I got my wish. School is over. Still unsure of what I want to do. One pass short of a full certificate. All I know, whatever I want to do, it has to involve basketball. My coach advised me to repeat Form 5. I was like, you have to be kidding. School again? He was like, you know, you never won nothing at the school level for basketball. Why not come back, repeat we have a decent side. Let's try to win the East Zone that year. So I attended St. Augustine Secondary School as a repeater. At that time, Gustin, as you would call it, had the best footballers and basketballers you could think about. So I felt right at home. Come on, national player, big boy in school. The only hopes of these players or students will hopefully somebody would see them with all the talent they have and get a scholarship. I wasn't thinking like that. Me? Get a scholarship? No. I repeated, I accomplished the challenge my coach set out for me, we won the East Zone, and I got the one pass I needed, full certificate, five passes in the bag. So I'm sitting there that August vacation, five passes in my pocket, no money, and I'm like a broken compass, no direction. For the second time, I was lost, and in talking to my neighbor, she brought up the idea of A-levels, and I'm, I'm watching her like... Why are you trying to torture me with this school? So, my coach being the person that I would go to at that time, he told me, he said, Tristan, you know, Form 6 bill sounds are bad. I'm like, let me hear your reasoning behind it. He was like, well, we win the East Zone this year. We fell short of our national title. Come back. 
we will try for a national title this time around. I think he knew at that time the only thing that could get me going was basketball. And I'm telling myself, hmm, maybe if I win a national championship, I'll be famous. So why not? So I started Form 6 without my father's help. He had made up his mind that he had spent enough money on me to go to school. After all, I was 18. He felt that it was time for me to look for a job. But I was sold on winning that national championship. Nothing was going to hold me back. Because now, I had the vision that maybe, with all the talent I had, maybe I could get a scholarship and get to the NBA. That was the dream, right? So, my neighbor and my club coach at the time of Maloney Pacers, they, brought, they bought all my school supplies. From school shirts, sneakers, books, you name it. And that made me depressed. Honestly, it made me very depressed. Because here I was thinking, I'm not doing drugs. I'm not part of a gang. So why wasn't anybody from my family giving me that support? My mother, she did it from afar. But it wasn't the same. My grandmother always quarreling. Tristan, we need buckets of water in the house. That time, we had to fill buckets of water from a standpipe at the bottom of a hill. So I either in school or training. Nobody to fill water in the house. So you can imagine the coral I used to get regularly. It was there I realized that nobody was going to buy into my dream. Because that, that's, that's just what it was. My dream. Right? So I found a job after school at a pharmacy close to where I live. School would be dismissed at 2.30 p.m. I had to work from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Go to training in Maloney from 9 to 11 p.m. Reach home by at least 12 a.m. Study at least um, maybe 3 a.m. Get up at 7 a.m. the next morning to do it all over again. But I was determined. Determined to show my family that even though without your support, I could balance school, a part-time job, and basketball. I was no longer the boy with issues, fighting, misbehaving. I was a lower six student with a good heart, finally a sense of direction. I was going to the NBA. That's what I told myself. In St. Augustine at the time, stealing was the order of the day. People would steal your cell phones, they would steal your Jansport bag, you name it. Me, on the other hand, I was always against that type of living. In worst case scenarios, I would either convince the thieves or students to give back the stuff, and sometimes I would even pay them to give it to me. And I would then return it to the persons that they would have taken it from. I would walk around, I would break up fights, I would see students sitting on the corridors who look like they depressed, they have the wool on their shoulders, and I would sometimes just offer a kind word of advice, you know? Something simple as it gets better. Word got around to the deans at the time of what I was doing. They called me in to thank me, and I told them, I'm not doing this for thanks. That's just who I was. But there's a powerful saying that I believe in, because my mother always pounded this in my head. She said, do good, and good will follow you. It so happened, the Ministry of Education were looking for three students at the time. Not just for academics, but overall. Unknown to me, the deans had informed the principal of my exploits. I, along with some others, our names were submitted to the ministry. And out of the entire country, I was one of those of three students selected to represent Trinidad at the 16th Commonwealth Conference for Education Ministers in Cape Town, South Africa. Yeah. So there I was saying, wow, Cape Town, South Africa, I wonder if it had basketball teams over here, right? <laughs> I went back to school to a hero's welcome. They made me the head boy or head prefect and the basketball captain. I graduated from St. Augustine that year as the school's valedictorian, principal awardee for my dedication and contribution to the school. So there I was at, at the top of my game. Keep results are out. I did pretty well. And I'm telling myself, I'll get into any university. Easy. But 
studying basketball again, I applied late. And in me applying late, I was turned down by both UE and, Bo and UTT. <coughs> so I'm sitting there in August in a sunken place because I'm like, where do I go from here now? Maybe I should just take my father's advice, go look for a job. Last week in August, when all seemed lost, I got a phone call from the director at the Ministry of Sports informing me that my name was shortlisted for a scholarship since April, unknown to me. And he wanted me to come in for an interview. I said, sure. An opportunity presented itself, so I grabbed at it. I went and I aced that interview. They offered me the scholarship on the spot. Because it was late, the only thing available for me was a six-year program in Havana, Cuba. Well, again, I want to die. Cuba, where everybody is telling me that Castro is this and communist and one sort of thing and frightening me and I'm like, oh my God, what did I just do? So, I took, I took it. I had to read and write in Spanish in one year. Because if I don't, they were putting me on the first plane back to Trinidad. I was a bit disappointed. It didn't fit in with the plan or the dream I had. It was to go to the NBA. Cuba and the US have no affiliations whatsoever. How am I getting into the NBA? <sighs> but I guess it wasn't meant to be. My plans, my dreams had to change. I was horrible at Spanish. I cried for three weeks. My mother could tell you. She's right there with the phone recording. She could tell you. I cried for three weeks constantly. I was only able to say a proper sentence in Spanish after four months. I finished that first year the best oral speaker in the entire year body. I was extremely thankful because in foreign countries, they don't care about your name. They care about what country you come from. So I felt a sense of national pride that I was flying my country's flag high. So that, that six years went by quickly. I graduated with first class honors, speaking fluent Spanish, and I was still able to play basketball for my university. So I got the experience. It wasn't the US. The dream of, of playing in the NBA was long gone. Every time I felt regret for that choice, I fell back on my mother's words. Every time I would call her crying, God sent you there for a reason. I came back to Trinidad after all those years to a very different and fast-paced life. Crime was rampant. Again, I felt like I didn't belong. But this time I was older, I was wiser, and I didn't have the ability to just change, but I had the ability to also adapt. I wanted to give back to my country, not only in service, but with the wisdom that I would have acquired throughout the years. And the only way I think I could have done that was in the school system and on the national teams I was privileged to manage. So I stand before you here today, secondary school teacher, local first division basketballer, gosh, I wish I was saying NBA player, but. <laughs> the ride was filled with bumpy roads, potholes, hills to climb and descend, sharp U-turns, broken bridges, you see, the bumpy roads are the disappointments you will meet. The potholes are the problems and the trials that will present themselves on your journey. And like driving, you either swerve and go around it, or if it's them potholes that we know we have in Trinidad, you go down easy, come back out, and you continue on your way. On the road to success, you will meet crossroads, where your dreams and your ambitions may have to be put on hold, or even disregarded. But be patient. When you meet these crossroads, sometimes the road you want to take is blocked, while the other one is free, but it has a lot of bends and turns. What will you do then? Will you be like the people who give up and turn away? Or are you determined enough to find an alternative route to ensure that you get back on that road to success? It may take you longer than you may have planned. In my case, it was six years. But I assure you, eventually you're on that straight and clear path with the sun rise in the horizon. 
So four months. Four months, right? Good. No longer standard five. Because that's what I tell my four months right now. Because sometimes they play like they're still in standard five. I make sure I have to reiterate that they're in four months. Make the best of your school life. Choose your friends wisely. As they will carry you down bumpy roads and leave you there. The more challenges will present themselves as you get older. You need to understand that. Find a passion. Be it sports, be it the arts, whatever you choose. Make sure and use it as something to further push you on your road to achievement. Give yourself a fair chance at success. Eliminate distractions. Cell phones, social media, the Facebook, the Instagram. These things are always there. Dedicate your time to your studies. I see children in my school struggling daily because of friends. Peer pressure is a serious, serious thing. Don't let anyone tell you all to do something that you know is wrong. Your parents taught you better than that. You are here seated today. You are awardees. That is because you listen to your parents. Don't stop. They know what they are telling you. They know what they are guarding you from. CSEC students, you have climbed a big hill. You are now standing at that mountain top. But with every climb, there is a descent. And I don't say this to scare you in no way. But know you are now in another phase of your life. Where one journey is complete, another one begins. I encourage you to further your education as far as your minds may take you and as far as your parents' pockets will allow. <laughs> no matter what it takes, tell yourself you have to make it. Set goals for yourself. Use the what, the hows, and the whens. What am I going to do? How am I going to do it? And when am I going to do it? Your life is a canvas. You are the artist. Paint the perfect picture. And even if you make mistakes, keep trying until you have that perfect image right in front of you. And to everyone, foster a relationship with God. Very important. Whatever you refer to him as, make sure you acknowledge him. Because we are not here by chance. I am not here by chance. I could have been in so many places. You definitely are not here by chance. <laughs> The one thing that we all have in common is we have been successful at one point in our lives. So we must appreciate and give thanks for that. I am Tristan Benjamin, teacher, basketballer, husband, and as I now close as your feature speaker, there's a song I hear constantly on the radio from a local artist. I think his name is Prince Swanee. You all know who Prince Swanee is? <laughs> The, the, the line of the chorus, it says, aim for the stars, but I reach to the moon. And I like that. <coughs> but make sure when you get to the moon and you're on top shining, just as the moon shines bright, make sure your light doesn't cast a shadow on anybody else. But make sure your light shines away for others. Because together we aspire, together we achieve. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Tristan Benjamin. What an inspiring PTA address you have given to me. Let's just hear it again for him. I would now like to invite the Secretary of the Education Committee, Ms. Limo Joseph, to make a presentation to Mr. Benjamin. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I want to say that um, when we decided to choose a feature speaker, we had another person in mind, and that was his wife. <laughs> and she's right at the back there, in the stripe. Right? We wanted to ask her. But when I spoke to her mother, 
her mother said, her husband would be better. She said her son-in-law would be better. So we invited him to our meeting, committee meeting, and he really impressed. Being a part of the system, as a teacher and all that, and we didn't have a choice. We didn't, we didn't hesitate to ask him to be the speaker. And he did really great today. So let's give him a look. <laughs> so, Tristan, on behalf of the Telephone Workers Credit Union, we thank you very much for being a part of this awards function for both our <coughs> youth, young children, SEA, and the CSEC <coughs> children. Right? We want to thank you very much and we wish you all the best in your endeavors. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Limo. We now move into the distribution of certificates and gifts. <laughs> 